Hey guys, this is Andre. Um, I just wanted to come up here and um, encourage you guys. You know, this is such an exciting time right now, and uh, I really didn't plan on making any videos uh, during this time, but uh, I just had to come up here and encourage you guys and just tell you to stay strong face to face. Um, isn't YouTube a wonderful uh, uh, medium that we can share uh, God's grace with the world and, and, and communicate with you guys and share God's grace with you? You know, and um, I believe that this is a very crucial time that we're in right now. A lot of people send me emails and, uh, and, and, and messages asking me, you know, what's going on? You know, um, a lot of people are discouraged. Uh, and um, I had somebody say that, you know, that they're going to give up altogether on this whole, um, you know, waiting thing, so to speak. And uh, I really just wanted to come in here and uh, share with you guys that, you know, this is a time of testing. This is a time when uh, the lukewarm is going to be rooted out. This is a time when uh, the five foolish virgins that didn't have enough oil are going to be left behind. Uh, and it's hard as I'm saying this, but, you know, if, if, if you don't mean business with Christ, if you're not serious in your heart and if you're not dedicated to serving him right till the last end, you know, the Paul says we got to run the race till the end. And uh, if you drop off halfway, if you drop out, friend, uh, it's going to be the biggest mistake of your life. Because remember the virgins came and they knocked on the door and they said, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And the Lord said, verily, I tell thee, I know you not. Therefore watch, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man cometh. Yeshua was telling this parable. And uh, number one, he was telling them that there's going to be a delay. Uh, and number two, he was saying to them that you got to make sure that you've got enough oil. Um, a lot of the people watching now are going to wake up very suddenly and realize that this event took place in the blink of an eye. And going to want to get back on board, but it's going to be too late. And so I wanted to come up here and just encourage you guys. Look, this, this is a time where it feels like everything is going back uh, to normal. It feels like, you know, uh, the world is just continuing on, continuing on like it used to. But this is a time when we need to be ready. And this is a time when we need to really stay focused on Yeshua. And we need to make sure that uh, our lamps are filled. You know, um, I, I do apologize if there's background noise. My kids, you know, they, they veto any attempt of getting peace in this house. <laughs> but um, I wanted to come up here and just to share with you God's grace and uh, His love for you. You know, I know that um, a lot of people are getting discouraged in this time. And I wanted to share with you. A lot of people have been asking me some questions concerning Elena and the Three Days of Darkness, uh, the site in Egypt. And uh, again, I'm going to say it like I said it in the videos. You know, we make hypotheses and with the information available at the time, we share with you our hearts and we share with you possible connections that may or may not exist. But I believe that Elena, and, you know, that it's been confirmed that this thing is uh, under uh, intelligent control. And I believe, you know, considering the new information that's become available, obviously we didn't have the three years of darkness. Uh, but this thing did come by on the Feast of Trumpets. You know, this thing is under some type of intelligent control. And I believe that thing, you know, whatever this object may be, whether it's a comet, whether it's, you know, a craft of some sort, I have no idea. Um, you know, we can only hypothesize on this. But I believe that this thing has been placed in this orbit uh, for a very specific reason. This, this, this orbit, when you study this thing, and there's a lot of people that go into a lot of depths, uh, concerning this thing, but when you study this thing, um, there's very particular, uh, you know, mathematical calculations, you know, that's that's connected to this object being in this orbit uh, and, and the way it is in this orbit that confirms that this object is being controlled by some sort of intelligence. And uh, I can ascertain only that um, Yeshua has sent this thing or God has sent this thing as a signal to come by the way it's coming by at the time it's coming by uh, so that we can, you know, know because Yeshua said that there would be signs in the heavens and on the earth. You know, uh, you know, there's a ton of videos out on the earthquake that, that you know, that, happened, that the epicenter happened near um, the, a city called Conception in Chile, you know, Christ Church uh, getting hit by an earthquake, the Conception of Christ. Uh, the sign in the heavens on the 29th of, of, of September of the woman clothed with the sun with the moon under her feet, uh, the birth of Yeshua or the bright morning star on the 4th of October. And you have the seven day period in between where we are basically, we, we ought to be uh, repenting during this time, come before Christ and repent and get our hearts right because during this time, you know, uh, the Feast of Trumpets, when you look at uh, the Feast of Trumpets, it's known as, you know, uh, the day of the opening of the gates. Yom Kippur is known as the closing of the gates, uh, a lot of you may not know, but also on Yom Kippur uh, in Jewish customs, people were not allowed to get married on that day. So the marriage takes place before that time. And uh, Yom Kippur starts, well, today is the 7th of October. It starts 
officially at sunset, which is around um, six o'clock Jerusalem time, uh, and it runs until the next day, uh, the eighth of October, until six o'clock on that day when the gates are closed. So you know, I'm not saying that this event will take place during this time. What I'm saying is, is we uh, as watchers command. Uh, are commanded by God to uh, to watch, and uh, we, we we tell you guys and we alert you guys that this could potentially be uh, very significant. If it's not, then you know that may be where very well the case as well. Uh, but one thing I can tell you for certain that time is running out, and um, you know we only have a short amount of time to get our affairs in order. Uh, it could possibly just be a few days. It could be another two weeks. It could be possibly another month. Uh, I don't know. But all I do know is that time is running out. And because time is so short, we need to make sure that our affairs are in order with Christ. Friend, if you don't know Jesus, I really want to invite you to accept Christ in your life. And I really want to ask you to, to say the sinner's prayer so that you can be saved. And um, if you want to say this prayer right now, let me let me, let me me lead you in prayer right now. Simply say, Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner just as I am. Forgive my sins, forgive my trespasses, and forgive those who have sinned and trespassed against me. Wash me in your precious blood. And cleanse my heart and write my name up in the book of life so that I can be saved. And guide me with your Holy Spirit so I can be ready and be acceptable when I stand before your throne to be judged one day. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've paid the price on Calvary for me, that you've died, that you made it possible for me to be saved today. I bless your name in this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, uh, it's a simple prayer. But you know what? God is so faithful. It says that when a sinner repents, he sins. God is faithful and just to forgive him of all his sins. And God doesn't remember your sins. Don't remind him after you've repented about your sins because he doesn't remember. You know what? I just briefly, while we're talking, I uh, just wanted to share with you a dream that I had. And I never had the, the opportunity to, to put this up on YouTube. But um, I had this dream and this is a while back. I had this dream and in this dream, I was standing outside. And while I was standing outside, I... Uh, I saw the skies changing. It was like you know the it, different types of lights that appeared in the uh, in the skies above me. And I was looking up, and I could see out of these skies, it it looked like it, it looked like tornadoes or twisters, possibly tornadoes or twisters. It looked like that, but it was made from pure light, and it came down, and and um, you know almost like a twister shape, and these things or these light beams came and it just came over me and a lot of people that were standing around me and we got pulled up sucked up into this light in the twinkling of an eye and as i was going up in the skies i looked up and i could feel the clouds literally wetting my face as, as i was going through the clouds, looking up and i was stretching my hands and just glorifying god and praising god and i looked to my left and my right and saw other people uh, just worshiping and praising god at the same time uh, and, um, you know, this was such an amazing experience for me. Uh, and I really believe the time is short. God's been giving a lot of people dreams. My wife, um, you know, she had a dream. Uh, this is last year. She had a dream last year that um, my dad came rushing in the house and said, there's nothing after October. Um, you know, everything comes to a completion. I don't know if that means, you know, for us as believers. I, I, I think it might be. Uh, you know, nothing happened last year. It might be this year. I don't know. But in the dream, she mentioned that uh, he came in very, very seriously saying that, you know, that everything is finishing in October. Uh, another dream that she had was my, my wife is a former Hindu. And, uh, you know, when I met her, I started sharing Christ with her and uh, she accepted Christ. And we, we've been married for seven plus years now. And God's been really good to us. You know, she's accepted Christ. And um, she's serving the Lord with me, but she had this dream about uh, you know a festival that they have in 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 in, in the in the Hindu culture, and this festival um, happens at different times during the year. But in this dream that she had, the festival uh, in the festival, she said that it was the month of October that this festival happened, and it just so happens that this year that this specific festival falls on October. But she said that in the dream, everything, you know, we were at a beach or some, of some sort and, um, you know, it became really dark. And, um, uh, you know, what basically happened was that there was no electricity. Um, people tried to get money out of the banks and there was no money. Uh, apparently, the currency changed overnight and there was confusion. And there was a lot of darkness, smoke, something going on in, in that regard. Um, I, I cannot remember exactly the details, but... Something significant happened in the month of October during this festival. 
And because this festival doesn't fall on the same month every year, it was just really interesting to me that, you know, this specific festival is happening this year, on October this year. Um, and she's having this dream of my dad saying that October, in nothing, there's nothing after October. I want you to consider also the following. Um, you know, I, I, I really believe that God used the different cultures and the di different generations to communicate a message specifically to this generation. Consider the Mayans. Their calendar officially ends on October the 28th of this this uh, of, of October this month. Um, you have the sign in the heavens on September the 29th appearing. Um, you have the sign of the dragon or this meteor shower appearing on the 8th, which is on the day of Yom Kippur, the closing. You've got Revelation 12 talking about, you know, the sign of the woman. Then John sees another sign appearing, uh, you know, a dragon and a third part of his tail drew a third part of, uh, sorry, uh, his tail drew a third part of the stars and threw them on the earth. And you've got the seven day period in between these two signs. Now, if you read Revelation 12, it says that, you know, after this child was born, uh, he got caught up unto God. And uh, when you study that word caught up, it's the same word uh, you know, as harpazu, which means to catch away. Um, and then you have this media shower. And again, you know, I, I, you know, people said to me, well, Andre, um, you know, we have these media showers all the time. Um, and, you know, we have the, the sign of the dragon, you know, which is a constellation in the skies all the time. We can see them all the time. And I understand that. But what you have to understand is that John sees a media shower in Revelation 12. And he sees it in the same, at the same time he sees this woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet. So you have to understand, first of all, this sign of, of, of Revelation 12 uh, that has been fulfilled on the 29th of September this year is very, very significant. Because uh, it doesn't happen on God's festivals that frequently. You know, the last time you had this was at Jesus' birth, at his conception. And you have it again now, and you have it the next time you have this, I, I, I think is in 2017 or 2018, um, around there. But it's very rare for the sign to appear. And then you have this media shower, which, you know, um, NASA is saying is going to be extraordinary this year. Uh, my, my question to you is, you see a sign occurring on the 29th of September, and you see this media shower appearing uh, literally within seven days on a festival day, Yom Kippur. Um, and you have the seven day period that we're currently in right now. Could this be significant? Again, this is an hypothesis. Could this be significant? So I, I really don't know what, what, you know, <laughs> how to put this to you. All I can say is that amazing things are happening. Consider this, you know, um, the marine biologist, uh, they noticed a gray whale appearing off the shore of Israel. Another amazing sign that appeared. Um, the sign of Jonah. He said that you would see, you know, this generation would get the sign of Jonah. We all thought it was the three days of darkness. Well, I certainly know that you are going to see three days of darkness. It's being predicted in the Bible. And we were all joking in the house concerning the sign. You know, is God really going to send us a whale, <laughs> you know, to bring the sign of fulfillment? Well, guess what? He sent a whale. You know, these whales are extremely rare. Uh, the, 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 the belief to be near extinct. And... Uh, the location that they were in were completely out of the, you know, the natural order of things. So, um, you know, God's clearly giving us signs on the earth and in the heavens. And he's saying, look, that this is the time. You guys need to understand that we are in the time. We need to get ready. And Yeshua wants us to be ready. And I wanted to come up here and encourage you guys to get ready. You know, I pray for my family daily. And I pray for you guys. I get a lot of requests online. That says, Andre, pray for my family. You know, uh, and uh, we do. We pray for every single person that, that sends in requests. And uh, I want you to guys know, you, you guys to know that God loves you very much. You know, He's not sitting up there in some cloud just waiting for you to do something wrong. He loves you and He cares about you. And He sees you right now. And if you find that your oil is running low, I want to encourage you, friends, um, fill up your lambs with oil. This is the time. You know, we may not have a lot of time to do this. And this is the time when we need to get ready and right with God. So you've got all these signs appearing this year. And, you know, when you look at next year, it doesn't line up. You know, nothing lines up next year. You don't have the sign of Revelation 12 appearing in the heavens on Rosh Hashanah next year. Um, you know, and, and so many other things that, that's just simply not lining up for next year. That's the reason a lot of us, you know, our watchers are, are, are really... Uh, paying very careful attention to this specific time. 
um, we know that you know it you know it's pretty soon that trumpet's gonna get blown I'm telling you and we got to be ready and uh, when, when we see all these different things happening you know it, it personally I'm concerned because um, you know this events gonna happen so suddenly a lot of people's gonna be surprised um, you know a lot of my family's gonna be blown away they're gonna be surprised because the stuff that we've been talking to them about has actually come true and I put some resources up on my Facebook page uh, specifically, you know, for, for unsaved people, my family, and for those that don't know Yeshua, uh, or, or for or those of you that, that have friends and family that don't know Christ, to help them understand what just happened. This is how serious this is. Um, you have to understand that the bridegroom tarried, but he cannot tarry forever. He can't tarry for long. This delay is not going to go on forever. There's going to come a time when Yeshua is going to say, you know what, let's blow this thing, let's get these people out of here. Uh, and God's judgment is going to start raining on the earth. And unless you know Christ, unless you are saved, my friend, unless you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I'm afraid you're going to be left behind and you're going to suffer God's wrath and you're going to be on the wrong side of, of God's wrath, on the wrong side of the table, sitting with the wrong crowds in a horrible, horrible time that's going to come upon the earth. This is a warning. This is a, a serious, serious warning that you need to take serious to all of my family that's out there. You know, um, I've talked to a lot of you guys. I want to tell you to get ready. I want to tell you to get right with God. I want to tell you that Jesus Christ really is the only way no other religion no other god can save you only yeshua jesus christ is the way to heaven john 14 6 says that he there's no other name given whereby a man can be saved and so i want to uh, really encourage you guys and i really want to tell you guys to to uh you know talk to your family give them messages tell them to get right with god you know plead with them you know we know what is coming and trust me, it is coming. You know, <laughs> there's no, there's no delaying this anymore. You know, when a woman is pregnant, you know, there's only so long that she can delay from giving birth to this child. And pretty soon, you know, we're gonna get called up hither to be with our Christ. You know, to attend this glorious uh, wedding, this, you know, this supper of the Lamb. You know, the, to see the place that Yeshua has prepared for us. Somebody left a, a, a post on my Facebook page saying, if Yeshua, you know, if he took uh, six days, you know, five days to pay, you know, to, to you know, to create the earth, and six, uh, and, and one day to create mankind. Uh, you know, what do you think your place in heaven looks like after two thousand years of waiting, after two thousand years of preparation? What an amazing thought, you know. So I, I really believe that what we're about to see in heaven is going to be awe-inspiring. It's going to be breathtaking. Uh, you need a glorified body to see it because you would literally die. You would not have breath just to, to see what God has prepared for you. It would take your breath away every single breath you take. So <laughs> God has prepared such an amazing place for us. And he's excited, you know, for us to come there. He wants us to come there. You know, he can't wait. You know, if you uh, buy a child a toy or, you know, or something, um, you know, you're excited because you want to see the response on that kid's face. And that's, you know, how Yeshua is with us. You know, he's really excited to show us what he's prepared. I want to go. You know, I've got no plans to staying on this place. I'm drinking Red Bull because I need every little help I can to get there, my friend. So, um, you know, we need to be ready. We need to be excited and uh, we need to encourage one another. And that's the whole reason I came up here to talk to you guys face to face, um, to motivate you, to tell you that Jesus is coming, you know, no matter what happens. You know, um, my little daughter said to me, Daddy, um, I'm not going to make my bed today. Why not? Well, if Jesus is coming, I don't need to make my bed. So, my sweetheart, you're going to make your bed all right. And, um, you know, so even the kids are excited. You know, they are thinking about what it's going to be like there. Uh, you know, we talk, my, 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 my six-year-old said, Dad, I want my house to be made of candy floss. Um, my whole house candy floss. I said, well, sweetheart, if that's your heart's desire, I'm pretty sure God can do something. Me, personally, I'm going to lie on my back and have angels drop grapes in my mouth all day long. Yeah, I'm just joking. <laughs> you know, in heaven, we're going to do work and we're going to be fruitful in God's kingdom. And, um, you know, I just wanted to come up here and tell you guys that um, he loves you and I love you. And uh, I, I re I'm really speaking from my heart. I haven't prepared anything. I don't have any updates. I just, just, just wanted to come up here and tell you guys that God loves you. And he's excited to see you. And he wants you to be excited. He wants you to be ready. If there's anything in your life that you don't feel comfortable with, anything that the Holy Spirit brings to your remembrance, you know, that you need to make right, friend, do that straight away. We don't have time. We don't have time to play around. You know, like I said, pretty soon this trumpet is going to blow. And my desire is to see all of you guys up there and to meet all of you guys face to face and just to hug 
all of you guys and to go up to my Messiah, my Yeshua, Jesus Christ, that paid that very dear price on the cross of Calvary, to give him a hug and just to look him in his face and to tell him and say, thank you. Thank you for, for what you have done. Thank you for the price that you've paid, that you've uh, died for my sins on the cross of Calvary and that you made it possible for me to be saved. Thank you so much for saving me today. And so I believe a lot of you are going to have a lot of gratitude when you sit there, when you stand before Yeshua and when you look upon his face, you know, the, this blessed hope that we've been waiting. Pretty soon this day is going to arrive, friends, uh, and it might be sooner than you think. So my uh, message to you is be ready, stay in prayer and be encouraged because pretty soon we're going to go to the most awesome place that your mind can even conceive. May God bless you and look see you before you soon. God bless. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you received from us, how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarn you and testify. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you do so toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more, that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside, and that you may lack nothing. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words.